Hello and welcome to Quarterlight, your card brochure channel. Today, we're going to look at the FSO. So in this particular brochure, it's showing the uh, FSO model range. So we had the 1300, uh, the 1500, the 1500 GLS. Also, you could have it as an estate or pickup. And it's also showing it um, in here as the FSO Polonaise, the hatchback version as well, which looked a little bit more modern. Now, FSO was a manufacturer, state-owned manufacturer in Poland, who produced these cars under license from Fiat, initially being called under the brand uh, Fiat Polski, later on, um, after that license expired, simply being called the FSO 1300, 1500, etc, etc. Now, like I say, these were Fiat, so they were based on the Fiat 125, and they basically had um, older engines in them, so Fiat 1300s, Fiat 1500 engine um, within them. Like I said, this particular brochure is the range brochure, so let's have a look at that now. So here we have the two cars side by side. Here we have the aging design of the FSL 1300, 1500, and here we have uh, the hatchback version, the Polonaise. Now we'll start with the uh, initial design, this first one here, the FSL 1300, 1500, you can see this for 1982 is a very elderly looking design for sure it differed from the italian versions by having these uh, uh, twin round headlamps uh, a simpler bumper and simpler grille etc and orange turn signals it also differed in many other ways but um, certainly the body body sheet was a lot simpler on there and like i say it had the ancient fiat 1300 1500 engines within them and if we turn the page over it gives us a bit of a lengthy text i'm just going to zoom into the top part because i think that's quite an interesting little way it starts off so these cars really they sold um, under the very budget they sold by price basically there was the budget end of the car market think Skoda think Larder and like Fiat um, sorry and, and like FSO it was lumped into those very cheap basic vehicles uh, one thing that the FSO seemed to escape from Skodas and Larders there used to be lots of jokes and almost an embarrassment about driving them FSO seemed to escape that although I think these were actually a lesser car than than and Larder and and uh, indeed um, Skoda in so many ways. I guess because they were sold in less numbers and certainly today a very rare car. I do think though how this is started off in the brochure. Thinking about those little things being a very basic. Um, a car that's a long way behind the times when it's been sold in the UK. An interesting way this starts off. So if I just read this to you. You're about to be introduced to FSO cars. A range of six models from Poland's largest and most advanced car manufacturer. FSO has been building cars since the early 1930s when they first began their policy of technical cooperation with Western European manufacturers. This policy has resulted in FSO cars having a sophisticated production line that benefits from over 50 years dealing with the West. But this sophistication isn't just confined to the production line either. FSO cars also employ some of the most modern and up-to-minute quality control techniques available today. So an interesting way it's starting off. You kind of like almost thinking this is a a, a well-made, advanced car. So it's kind of a little bit of a clever marketing, I think. 
On the opposite page then it is showing the uh, FSOs 1300, 1500 and 1500 GLS. This will be the uh, GLS version and it's sporting some very fancy alloy wheels. I don't think I ever saw one with those wheels on before. At the bottom text, you probably can't make it out. It says the alloy wheels shown on the 1500 GLS are available as an optional extra. But like I say, I don't remember seeing one with that. But you can see this sort of vinyl roof and it's, you know, it looks a little bit more upmarket for sure. But you can see an extremely aging design. And as we turn the page, it shows the interior of the FSOs. Very plain, but I don't think that that's particularly bad looking interior overall um, for the early 80s. It's more of a 70s interior, isn't it? I guess. I guess I'm so used to seeing 70s brochures because that's what I'm most interested in. I'm always saying, yeah, it doesn't look too bad, but yeah, we are into the 80s now, so yeah. It is a bit behind the times, I guess, but a functional interior nevertheless, and quite an accommodating uh, boot. On the opposite page, it's showing the other versions you can get. So the estate version. Again, I don't think they told, sold too many estate cars, but having said that, um, the estate car actually won the 1978 UK estate or station wagon car of the year award um, 1978 like I, like I can say an unusual award to win when there were so many other much more capable estates really I think possibly there was really looking at that price and they were pretty tough cars to be honest with you so something like that pickup would have been a very useful vehicle it would have been horrendous to drive but a very useful pickup because they were quite a strong vehicle i do remember actually seeing um one of these come up for sale in the auctions in the late 80s it was puffing out smoke there was much amusement as it came into the auction room and i think it sold for around about 50 pounds thinking back you know if that happened now, I would love to have one of these. But at the time, it was like nobody wanted to buy this FSO pickup. And this particular page folds back out. to so have a little bit of a show of these interior seats. But as we fold the page back, we get our first glimpse of the FSO 1500 Polonaise. It's a bit more of a modern looking design, isn't it? And the designer was actually, uh, it was actually Gijaro. It was a Gijaro design car. So one of the top designers came up with this. A hatchback design, so, you know, people wanted hatchbacks, so it made more sense. But it still had that very aging chassis. Those very aging and out of date 1500s in this case. Uh, sorry, 1300 and 1500 engines, in this case a 1500. So a very aging car beneath this uh, Gigaro designed exterior. I love how it starts on this, how it starts talking about this car. It's a little bit weird. Let's just have a look at that. Just this top line alone, the sleek lines of the FSO Polonaise conceal a sumptuous interior. The cloth covered seats have plenty of fore and aft movement and the steering column has rake adjustment, etc, etc. But like I said, I'll read that again. The sleek lines of the FSO Polonaise. Never has such a car been described as having sleek lines, possibly Functional, I can understand functional, but I'm not too sure about sleek lines. This brochure then opens out uh, still further to give some more images of this particular car. You can see this very functional hatchback, although an extremely high sill to bring your objects on there. Um, but like I say, a much more modern looking car hiding very antiquated mechanics 
and finally the the brochure folds out to show the specifications so let's have a quick look at the specifications so there you go it gives you what's available on your 1300 1500 1500 gls estate polonaise pickup um quite a lot of features for a very basic car to be honest with you um if i just slowly run my way down there uh interestingly on this um if you look at the polonaise it does have a five speed gearbox if i look at it it is the only one that does have that five speed gearbox so certainly an improvement in that way look at the technical specs so the fso 1300 it's got a 1299 cc engine producing 64 brake horsepower so as you can imagine it was no speed demon with that four speed gearbox i'm sure it wasn't particularly relaxing on the motorway either the larger engine version was a 1481 cc engine with 75 brake horsepower the estate could be had as that 1300 or 1500. the polonaise had that 1481cc engine it did produce more power at 82 brake horsepower and did have that five speed gearbox so it certainly was a slight improvement but by this time 1982 it was certainly a very out of date car some describe the FSOs as the worst cars ever. I think there was more dust cars out of the time. Um, probably if you look, compare it to 70s cars, it wasn't too bad. But by the 80s, they were very out of date. And it will just slowly move down. And it gives you a little bit of information about the date so to conclude yeah the fsl 1300 1500 polonaise let's group them all together and say yeah they weren't the best cars were they really uh some talk about them as being the worst cars i don't know what your opinion on that is they were pretty tough they were very cheap to buy new but the second hand resale value was horrendous if you took it in for a trading the salesman would just laugh at you um, unfortunately it had such a bad reputation it was so far behind the times when they were being sold in the 80s and early 90s i think eventually the, the factory was actually bought out by Deu. would i buy one of course i would buy one if i saw one today they must be one of the rarest cars uh, still being driven in the uk i don't know how many there are left but i would imagine it's probably under 10 i would guess thank you so much for watching course light today please do like and subscribe and we'll see you very soon take care bye, -bye.